working together to help church members do the same. When you look at Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, it says that God chose some of us to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, so that his people would learn to serve and his body would grow strong. This will continue until we are united by our faith and by our understanding of the Son of God. Then we will be mature, just as Christ is, and we will be completely like him or made perfect. So, what do you do when the leaders of a nation or a city cease to lead in the way that God has called them to lead and to govern? And they begin to become corrupt in themselves. Well, when this happens, a society and a nation, it becomes grievous. And what we will find here in the book of Micah, that it had become very grievous for Israel. Corrupt leaders uh, um, were prominent in the nations of uh, Judah and Israel. Uh, and the same is today. We have uh, corruption today in government at the federal level, at the state level, and, the, and also at the local level. So do you think God looks the other way when leaders become corrupt? No. God confronts them. We see that here in Micah, that God does not shove uh, sin under the rug. He doesn't look the other way. He confronts them here, and the word also says that they would be held accountable. So let's look through um, look through these uh, verses. Let's look at verse 1 in chapter 3. It says, Hear now, O heads of Jacob, and you rulers of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know justice? You who hate good and love evil. Now, look at this. Those leaders, they hate good and they love evil. So what happens to a nation that where the leadership hates good and loves evil? Well, look what happens to the people who strip the skin from my people and the flesh from their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people lay their skin from them, break their bones, and chop them into pieces like meat for the pot, like flesh for the cauldron. So this is very grotesque language. The leaders of, of, of Israel, of course, were not involved in cannibalism. This is symbolic language. What God is saying is because of your corruption as leaders, what you are doing is you are taking, taking advantage of the poor. And you are driving them to an early death. You are just grinding these people into the dust. You leaders, you're actually treating your people like cattle who are made to be eaten, flayed, chopped into pieces, and thrown in the and into the frying pan. So you are abusing your people for profit. You gain wealth from them by squeezing them to death. You are using your own people for your own good and lining your pockets with their hard-earned money. In verse 4, it says, Then they, this is the leaders, and then they will cry out to the Lord. See, these leaders, even in their corrupt state, they're very spiritual. They're religious people. So they, 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 they say they cry out to the Lord. But how is the Lord going to deal with this? It says that he will not hear from them. It means that God will not listen to their prayers. And he will even hide his face from them at that time because they have been evil in their deeds. And this should have cut them to their heart. Because you see in Numbers 6.25 is a very famous verse that the Jews hold very dear. It is a blessing pronounced by the priests of Israel, and they ask the Lord 
to make his face shine upon them. Here, because of their corrupt deeds and their evil leadership, Micah promises the exact opposite of that blessing, that God would hide his face from them when they cried out to him. <clears throat> so now he addresses the prophets. And you want to, I want you to keep in mind that Micah was one of the very few true authentic prophets in the land in that time because the land was full of false prophets. There was a false prophet on every corner, just like there is today in these last days. Verse 5, thus says the Lord concerning those prophets who make my people stray. Now isn't that interesting? Prophets were called of God to lead people to God, not away from God. But these prophets, they're leading people away from God. How are they doing that? They do that be by pronouncing lies to, to the people. And what kind of lies goes on to say? Who chant peace? So these prophets give the people only good messages while they chew with their teeth. What that means is that when the prophets are bribed with food, they will return the favor by prophesying peace and happiness to the people. They will give a good word from the Lord to the people, but it will always be at a cost. But who prepare war against him. In other words, they can be bought and sold with a price. Who puts nothing into their mouths. So what's this saying? Well, those prophets, they take from the people that they are, they're supposed to be ministering to. They take from them, but they never give anything of worth in return. Therefore, you have, this is what the Lord says to those false prophets, therefore you shall have night without vision, which means you're going into, a, into spiritual darkness and there will be no light at the end of that tunnel. He goes on to say, you will have darkness without divination, which means in that dark place, there will be no light to guide you out. And the sun shall go down on the prophets, and the day shall be dark for them. And Matthew 6, 23 is a great application. Actually, it starts in verse 22. It says, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is evil, then your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? God goes on to say in verse 7, So the seers shall be ashamed, which means that God will not speak to the prophets. And these corrupt prophets are going to be ashamed because they would have, they're going to have to make up their own prophecies and say uh, their own word, and they're going to say, well, thus saith the Lord, and they're going to go on, and they're going to give their own message. But they will be found out, because their prophecies will be proven false. They will not come to pass. And the diviners abashed, indeed they shall be, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. And I'll tell you what, we've seen this happening. We've seen this happen in our day of time where false prophets have been exposed for their wickedness and uh, for their prophecies that have not come to pass, and they slink away ashamed. In verse 8, but truly, <clears throat> I am full of the power of the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. So the prophet Micah takes this moment after addressing those uh, corrupt prophets of Israel 
who can be bought and sold even for a meal. But Micah says, I am full of the power by the Spirit of the Lord. What he's saying is, I stand before you as an authentic prophet. I am declaring what the Lord has given me to say, and you can uh, be rest assured the prophecy that I am bringing to you today is from the Lord. And he goes on to say, now hear this, you heads of the house of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel who adhor justice and pervert all equity, who build up Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with iniquity, her heads judge for a bribe, her priests teach for pay, and her prophets divine for money. So Micah pretty much spells out in detail exactly what is going on here in Israel and also in Judah. Their civil leaders and their religious leaders and prophets will only perform their duties if they get something out of it. They're asking the people, okay, you want this done, you want that done, what's in it for me? 